Why the right is fixated on the so-called threat of cancel culture and so fired up about children's books. I mean, the answer, honestly, is, is exactly what uh, what Eddie just said. I mean, that there is this massive sense of disconcertment uh, among uh, the right, among an older, whiter baby boom population. And we saw one of the key spurs for Donald Trump's support was people who felt insecure about the place of whites in American society. <laughs> of course, what a flawless argument, because white people bad, cancel culture good. Printing books and crushing all dissent through Orwellian censorship and the threat of losing everything has always been the strategy of the good guys. There's nothing at all inside. Welcome back everyone, I'm Drone Tech and this is another stress-inducing, soul-crushing look at the Democrat state media's attempt to tear this country along racial lines using communist ideological subversion tactics in order to secure one party rule for the foreseeable future. But first, let me suggest that if you don't already have a VPN, now is probably a good time. There's suggestions that our credit scores might be based on our internet history in the near future. The same way that banks use data like income to judge credit eligibility now is how websites could use internet search history in the near future. I will not let my internet history be the judge of my credit score. That's why I use Virtual Shield. Just go to the link in the description and pin comment and get Virtual Shield for 50% off today. The answer, honestly, is, is exactly what uh, what Eddie just said. I mean, that there is this massive sense of disconcertment uh, among uh, the right, among an older, whiter baby boom population. And we saw one of the key spurs for Donald Trump's support was people who felt insecure about the place of whites in American society. Citation needed. I love how nobody scrutinizes or questions any of his completely baseless claims. Instead, you have this spineless hack who knows that if he gives anything other than than undeserved credibility to this broad racist generalization will end in him being canceled and banished from society next. Of course, this is America and we do still have the First Amendment. Nobody elected these propagandists to tell us how to think or rewrite history to please communist China. How's the old saying go? First they came for the socialists? Well, in this case, the socialists are coming for the American patriots, capitalists, conservatives, Christians, apparently white people, and generally anybody who stands against them. Who in their right mind thinks that ruining people's lives, powerful corporate censorship at the behest of the government, tearing down American historical monuments, or burning books is something that should be allowed to continue without opposition? We all know what the end goal is here. It's the erasure of American history and America, really, to be replaced with the left's Marxist vision by any means necessary. That's why we oppose it, not because of our skin color, not because we're elites, which we clearly aren't, or whatever other negative label the propagandists want to attach to us. The very fact that they oppose it means that we're over the right target. MSNBC wasn't finished with their toxic racial incitement though, with the gargoyle known as Joyless Reed claiming that the right is worse than Al-Qaeda. No equivalency by any measure between Antifa or any political left terrorism right now and what's going on on the political right. And I always like to remind people when they hear Antifa, that means anti-fascist, which is in response to another. So if you have Antifa, then you have Fa, or as in fascist. No, I'm sorry. Just because North Koreans call themselves a democratic republic doesn't make it so. We look at their actions, not the superficial surface level subterfuge that they use to cover up their actual true intentions. The right could just start a group called anti-fascist, and then obviously anybody in opposition to them are the fascists. It's brilliant. You're right. There is no equivalence. Antifa and BLM are responsible for way more violence and it's been going on for a lot longer. The fact of the matter is the actions of BLM and Antifa have been quite fascistic. From blocking highways and shooting at innocent people to threatening residential neighborhoods based on race and mobs of thugs threatening innocent people minding their own business. Or how about the months long siege against the Portland Federal Courthouse? Or the assault on the White House that the media cheered on? These people think Think that because they don't report on left-wing violence or because all those federal cases including felonies have been quietly dropped then nobody actually knows what's going on unfortunately though I have to say they're correct in the case of tens of millions of Americans 
Well, it says something about one political party when they think that the most dangerous thing are people who are against fascism. I think it says more about them than about Antifa. Reiterating the point that I've been making for decades now, that the particular threat that comes from the left is the fact that they can rationalize just about anything. And they do that by having violent fascist groups who simply call themselves anti-fascist. More like Al-Qaeda, because in the case of Al-Qaeda, they are embedded in and have the support of the government. That was part of the reason we wound up in Afghanistan. They're being shielded by the government in Afghanistan. In this case, even some of the people in the hearings want to defend fundamentally the people who committed the attack on our government, on our country. A few hundred right wingers get into a minor riot that didn't involve any weapons, where the only person killed was an unarmed Trump supporter, and they start calling it an attack on America. It's all lies. The Democrats have been involved in actions that were just as bad in the past. They literally riot every time Democrats lose an election. When Bush won, they actually attacked his motorcade and the inaugural parade had to be canceled. Uh, uh, Tom, the protesting is now very intense as we're coming up here. A lot of National Organization for Women screaming fraud. Bush stole the election. The police are now in about three or four rows deep along here trying to push back protesters. People taking off their clothes, protesting fur. You can see right here, people down in the street being handcuffed. Police are in riot gear. They pelted Bush's limo with eggs and brought the inauguration parade to a halt. The plan to have Bush get out of the limo for the traditional walk to the White House was scrapped. And as we all already know, mobs of Democrats forced their way into Kavanaugh's confirmation hearings in an attempt to stop it. But of course, that's completely different because Democrats did it. I'm going to end on this. The comparison of 75 million Americans, including elected Republican representatives to Al-Qaeda, is not just mind-blowingly stupid, but also incredibly incendiary. This follows as the left-wing media narrative is that their political opposition, 75 million Americans, should be subject to re-education and even drone strikes. Segments like this are simply building up a narrative that will make a huge chunk of this country think it's justified when they start locking up or bombing us. That's the purpose of all of this, to demonize us, to otherize us, all to justify the evil that they're planning. All right, that's all my mind could take of this vile shit for one day. Make sure to hit that like button on your way out and I'll see you all tomorrow.